So it's the next day out here again. We're going to get this alignment done. First, we got to do caster and camber. Now, according to TRZ, you want plus five to seven degrees caster, zero degrees camber, toe, eight toe in. So that's pretty much where we got to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this caster camber tool. Okay. And we're going to take it. We're going to take the instructions too over to the car. All right, guys, I got interrupted by the Amazon guy. So I got a package. So since you guys are here, a quick unboxing of this package and we'll both see if it's something that's good or something that's garbage at the same time so what this is hmm okay well it's well taped this is a catch can a tiny catch can maybe it's smaller than i thought it was going to be but that's okay for what i need it for i don't think it'll be too bad it's your basic catch can it's got a bracket which is nice this is a dipstick so you can check to see when it's full it's made of like billet aluminum or something it's pretty good here's the dipstick there's a filter that goes on top i guess you can use this as without a filter i guess i don't know it comes with a bunch of fittings here so that's the only thing with this thing is that it just uses like hose like this, which I guess is okay. And I always upgrade it. You could always put, um, probably put AN fittings on here. So I got this for the S10 because right now it has nothing. It has just the open like valve covers basically. Nothing ever comes out of it, it never spews oil or blow buys really but i figured this was like 30 bucks it, it's nice it actually it's a nice size for the truck because i don't have lots of room i guess this goes in there somehow i don't know filter even came with some thread tape so uh yeah let's get back to work got distracted with that catch can i think i know where i'm gonna put it i'll show you guys after so we take this tool and like I said before, we needed to make this because the hub is aluminum and so is the wheel. So, I mean, it'd be easy to make one just out of a couple pieces of strap or, I don't know, depending on your application, right? So then what we want to do is put this here. And then you want to turn this bubble till it's level like so get that right in the center and then according to the instructions we will take a look at where the camber is so this one is way off the chart in positive so it's not positive but we are negative and if we go to the middle of the bubble we are about a negative uh half a degree maybe negative and we want to be zero no we're one and a half negative sorry one and a half negative and we want to be zero right there i guess what we'll do is we'll have to fix that now to fix that on this one because i don't even have any shims in there right now you obviously can't see but there's no shims in there so what I'm gonna have to do is take basically unbolt the control arm, turn out the um, the high ends here, the rod ends, and uh, adjust it that way. Like I'm gonna have to give it, you know. Here, let me get a light. I got this from the dollar store. It's a magnetic and it's a light. Pretty good. So I can actually. So see it has a, a broad end here that bolts on. Now I'm not quite sure how to work this yet. But I'm gonna have to jack it up to move it or 
then on this side, I already added a whole ton of shims to get to zero. So it's weird that on this one I had to add a bunch, pull the control arm in because it was cambered out. And on that side, I actually have to lengthen it a bit to make it come out. So that's just the way the car is made, I guess. I don't know. On this side where there's all those shims, what I'm probably going to do after is take that control arm off and loosen the high end and pull it out a bit so that there's not so many shims. So I'll probably do that. That was just kind of my, how do I get it? You know, zero camber. So yeah, we're going to have to figure that out now. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll get the camber close and then, or to zero, and then we'll check what the caster is on that side. All right, so I took the bolt out, that bolt right there, for the upper control arm right here. So as you can see, hopefully, when you take one bolt out, you can actually lift the control arm up out of the way like that, and then that, that allows me to be able to turn in and out. So I can kind of do one side at a time, which is nice because then on this side, I can kind of do the same thing, remove some shims, measure them, figure out how much I need to go. I think what I'm going to do now is I'll have to adjust this and then put it back down on the ground and then remeasure. So I'm just going to do it because you won't be able to see deep in there what I'm doing anyways. I'm basically just going to turn the rod end out to give it more camber out camber to get it to zero if you're planning on buying these trz control arms and you wanted to know but i mean if you, you could check them before you put them in the car like i should have done but this is how long these uh high ends are rod ends so that's kind of how much you, obviously you can't go out you know more than half because then you don't have a lot of threads contacting it so i took it out just to see how long it is this is kind of the point where it was, so I just I know how much you know how much I'm gonna go out three threads or something and then see how that is. All right, I ended up having to take the wheel off, and so I figured I could show you better. I took the control arm off and just basically twisted out of the way, and then turned the rod end out a bunch, like say that much, and then just put it back on put the bolt back in and then put the wheel back on and then put it back on the ground and then see if it's better so I turned it out a bunch and actually just looking at it you can tell it's not but now that it's not negative anymore but now I went too far now it's positive like almost two degrees which we don't want we want zero so that's kind of the you gotta kind of screw around with it and now I gotta lift it up again go in some and keep doing this until I get to zero now if you didn't have well see I don't know what you would do if you're but mind you stock control arms probably wouldn't have so on this side or on a stock control arm you would just put shims in the front and the rear and that would pull the wheel in right but if the wheel if the sh there was no shims and the wheel was still negative camber, then I don't even know what you would do there. After taking the wheel off and on and off and on a bunch of times and uh, changing it around, I finally got it to pretty much zero. So it might be a slight, 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 tiny bit but I think it's pretty close to zero. So now what we do next, in order to figure out the caster, is we have to, they say to turn the wheel 20 degrees one way. So we're gonna, since I don't have one of those, like a, they have a plate that the wheel goes on like when you get real alignments done and has degrees on it. They said it's not 100% like critical, just so that both are the same so what I did on this side when I checked it is I just went one full turn of the steering wheel so okay so that's one turn of the steering wheel so then we go over here we recenter this to zero 
this right here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay, right there. Then we turn this to zero. So we get it right in the middle of the bubble there. Okay, and then we go over to the car, turn it back one turn. that and then one turn this way like that and then we recenter this plus five to seven degrees caster and we have six degrees positive so if it was over here it would be in the negative caster but we're in the positive at six degrees so that's good so then I think I'm gonna double check this side but when I did this side I think it was five degrees caster but it also was um, the camera was a little off then I had to I was thinking about removing some shims or something on that side so I'll double check this side and then I'll try to get it so that it's also got six degrees caster and then all we got to do is set the toe, check the bump steer, and we'll be good to go. All right, so what I ended up doing on the driver's side now is I took all the shims out that I had put, which are right here. So I had put a ton of shims in there to get it pretty good. And it was like, it was one, one degree negative still. So I took all the shims out, and now it is three degrees positive camber, which is way too much, obviously. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other side. I'm gonna screw the control arm in like all the way, see how it is with it screwed in all the way, cause that'll pull the control arm this way and then add shims as necessary. I just don't wanna have 5 million shims in there. I just thought I would show you guys how uh, killer my new uh, Milwaukee gun that I bought is. the other wheel just using this. of course down there but uh, I turned them in all the way and now we have about one and a half degrees positive still so doing that gave me one and a half degrees so now what I'm gonna have to do is go in here which is kind of a pain loosen off the the uh, actual control arm and then shim it but it'll be a little easier because I, I think I should be able to just loosen it. And then as I'm loosening it, it should uh, actually move in. And then when I know it's pretty close, then I should be able to put shims in and tighten it up. So that's what we're gonna do now. And we're pretty much just gonna loosen it until we gain what we need. Okay, so that's loosened and now we'll give it a bounce and then we'll check it if it did anything oh look at that oh yeah that's perfect that is zero exactly zero camber okay so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take pick shims instead of having like a whole bunch of shims it looks like I'll have maybe two shims okay 
So that's with just the back tight and the front, it's still kind of pulled out. And according to this, we've lost a tiny bit, it looks like. But I think that's kind of close to what, no, no, it's still zero, never mind. See, now the front, front one, I can use the gun for the front one. It is, um, you know, it's out from the frame of the car, but what happens when I tighten it with no shims in it, is it gonna throw off the... Okay, so let's see what that does. Zero on the camber, both bubbles, that's zero. So there's no shims in the front one. Putting shims in the front one doesn't really change it as much as I thought it would. It seems to be more the back one. And then having shims in the back or more in the back than the front should affect our caster. So let's check the caster now. Six and a half, six and a half. So it's within spec five to seven. So I think we're pretty good there with the caster and the camber. So that's a lot better. There's definitely a lot less shims in there, which I'm happy about. And now we're gonna do the toe next. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put, use our toe plates that I made, which are right here. So I bought two tape measures, push that up against a tire, and then we're gonna run the, the um, tape measures over to the other side, put them to this toe plate, which is gonna sit up against the tire like that. And then, then we're gonna take some measurements. Send it out and lock it. Push it up in the car. I can just grab. This one, if I give it a little tug, is 69 and an eighth. And this one is 69 even. So, yes it is. Hmm. So believe it or not, that's perfect then, right? Because we're supposed to be towed in an eighth. So if we have 69 and an eighth on the back side and 69 on the front side, that's towed in an eighth. So let's just double check that. I don't know how that's even possible that we got that lucky. 69. Okay, let's we'll double check, verify. I mean, adjusting the toe is easy anyways. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it like that, try it, see how it drives. And if it drives good, then it's all good, right? Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about with the, the um, alignment and stuff is the bump steer, which is only really relevant if you put a steering rack in or aftermarket control arms and things like that that might've changed things with the bump steer. And so basically, the way I understand it, bump steer is when you're driving down the road and you hit a bump or then the, and the front suspension goes up and down, you don't want the wheels or the toe to change. So, and actually when I first put this thing together, mocked it up, I had the tie rod end here on the top, which actually looked pretty good when it was up in the air. But when I put it down, the tire end went like way up. And then the, the toe, the tires pointed like in a whole bunch, really, really bad. So pretty much what you want, you wanna draw an imaginary line from here to the ball joint. And then you want pretty much your angle of your tie rod here to match the angle from here to there. And then when you jack it up, the toe in won't change a whole bunch. And I already know from jacking it up and down a million times that when I do jack it up, the toe stays, 
the same. Like it doesn't go all wonky. So I think we're pretty good there. So pretty much what you do for the what you do for the bump steer is it comes with all these different spacers and washers and all that stuff. You just combine these and move them around, take them out and put them in, move the small ones to the top, whatever you need to do in order to uh, to get your to get your bump steer where you need it to be. Then also TRZ has two holes in the in this steering arm, one further back, one further forward, and they say the further forward one like this is more for racing only, and this one is more for street, because it'll give you a little more steering angle. Uh, so, yeah. I guess I'm gonna tighten up the tie rod, tie rod ends and stuff, and call the alignment done. And then the only thing that still needs to be done is to bleed the brakes, and, um, grease the front end and then the car and clean the car and it should be ready to take for a test drive.